Her dad called me in full on panic, where's Brittany? I couldn't track her, her phone was off. I couldn't find out anything. And I went out trying to find her. And we we're looking in the sky for birds as we were out looking for a body. No birds, no body. No, we didn't find anything. Your heart literally drops to your feet. You go numb, you can't breathe. There was 10 or 12 of us girls. We organized our own searches. And we were like, you know what? Let's just go drive around the area where her phone was last pinged at. She had started talking to a guy named JT. She wanted to get dropped off at the Spring Creek High School because she was going to meet a new friend. They were both standing outside the truck. I had no clue who JT was. <laughs> The story unfolds in the rural expanse of Elko County, Nevada, renowned for its cowboy culture, rodeos, and thriving mining sector. The appeal of this booming industry led the Ujlaki family, comprised of Jim and Alicia Ujlaki and their two children, James and Brittany, to establish roots in the region, where they've resided for approximately a decade. Brittany developed her horse riding skills during their time in Elko, while Jim contributed to the community as a gold miner. As the years progressed, Jim and Alicia determined that their marital compatibility waned. Consequently, Alicia chose to relocate while ensuring closeness for the sake of co-parenting with Jim. Brittany, their daughter, chose to reside with her father, enjoying the opportunity to indulge in daily horseback riding. According to James, the relationship between his sister and father stands out as an exemplary father-child duo. Although initially named Gabrielle Ujlaki, Brittany earned her nickname over the years. With graduation approaching, Brittany sets her sights on a future in the Navy aspiring to pursue a career as a nurse or psychologist. Balancing her love for horses, her familial ties, and her friendships, the 16-year-old enjoys a fulfilling life. However, on Sunday, March 8, 2020, everything took an unexpected turn, deviating from the usual course of events. On alternate Sundays, Jim engaged in band practice, an activity Brittany eagerly attended. Jim anticipated her quick-witted comments during rehearsals. While the band played, Brittany simultaneously engaged in online conversations with her friends. At a certain point, she informed her father that her friend Bryce would be picking her up. Heading outside to meet Bryce, Brittany playfully declared her intention to beat her father home. Having first met at a rodeo years ago, Bryce and Brittany had formed a lasting friendship. Over time, Bryce consistently ensured Brittany's timely return home, earning the approval of her parents. Their routine included post-school hangouts, visits to the rodeo, drives around town, and shared meals. On the evening of the band practice, Jim returned home around 7.30, but Brittany was nowhere to be found. Concerned, he attempted to call her, only to have the call go straight to voicemail. Growing more uneasy, Jim reached out to Alicia, expressing his worry. Picking up on the seriousness in Jim's voice, Alicia tried calling Brittany, encountering the same voicemail scenario. A sinking feeling enveloped Alicia, knowing that Brittany, who always kept her phone on, was unreachable. Upon becoming increasingly anxious, Alicia promptly contacted her son, James, to seek information on Brittany's whereabouts. Unaware of Brittany's location, James attempted to ease his mother's concerns, suggesting that Brittany might have gone to a party. Urging James to investigate further, Alicia instructed him to reach out to Bryce, Brittany's friend. James promptly messaged Bryce, asking, Hey, where's Brittany at? In response, Bryce conveyed that he had dropped her off at Spring Creek High School. Seeking more details, James inquired about the person Brittany was with. Bryce described a tall, white guy with a cowboy appearance, admitting he didn't get a clear look. He mentioned that this new friend drove a green, ugly F-150 from the early 2000s. When James relayed this unsettling information to his mother, Alicia's anxiety intensified. The thought of of her daughter getting into a truck with an unfamiliar cowboy left Alicia in a state of panic, unwilling to accept the possibility of such a risky situation. Despite her concern, Alicia considered the possibility that her 16-year-old daughter might have a crush on a cowboy, rationalizing the situation. Jim took immediate action by reaching out to the Elko County Sheriff's Office. However, he decided to temporarily withhold filing a missing persons report as the family continued to reach out to friends and explore other avenues of inquiry. Realizing the urgency of the matter, Jim contacted Alicia early the next day, urging her to contact the police and initiate filing a missing persons report. The decision to involve law enforcement reflected the growing sense of unease and the need for official assistance in locating Brittany. Hello. Okay, so is it son or daughter? Daughter. Daughter? Yeah. 
Okay. What is daughter's name? Uh, Brittany, you want to me get a picture? Her friend that had her. I talked to him. He dropped her off at the high school down here okay. at 4 o'clock with some guy. And I go, what guy? And he goes, I don't know. She just said my new friend. Tall, white, cowboy-looking guy with a green truck. And now no can find her. None of her friends. Her phone's not on. Okay. Has she has she ever did this before? No. Ever done this before? No. And even when she does go out and do dumb things, we get a call with some crazy kind of an excuse. You know what okay. I mean? Trying to get her out of trouble. Nothing. Not a friend. None of her friends are best friends. Nobody can find her. Okay. <sighs> I need you to take a seat because there's some important information that I need from you. Okay. So you're, I, I know you're upset right now, but this is all important stuff that's going to help us, help me put something in with this patch so that we can let everybody know that, that she's, uh, um, uh, hasn't came home okay. and nobody's talked to her, okay? Okay. That way if uh, anybody has contact with her, they can, um, they'll know right away and then uh, law enforcement will take her into custody at that time, Okay. Okay. Okay, I have a pen right here. You can use that. And as you're filling that out, I'll just talk to you a little bit. So yesterday, um, have you guys tried to call any of her friends or Not everybody? Nobody's heard from her. No. Okay. Which is weird, because yeah. she's a social media freak. You no. know what I mean? She's always talking to people. But yesterday and the last few days, we've been in a really good lull. I talked to her FaceTime for an hour at like 1:30. Everything was just fine. Okay. She was just happy go lucky, everything was good. And all we know is that it was a green truck. We know nothing else about the individual. No, the, the boy said it was an ugly green F one fifty from the early two thousands. Is there any, is there any other friends that um uh, were with Bryce or it was just Bryce? It was just Bryce. And she was with him and then he dropped her off and he had no idea who this guy was. No, and he even said it seemed sketchy. And I'm like, well, why'd you leave her? <laughs> why'd you leave her? Hey, young man, what's your name? James. James. Do any of you guys have access to her social media accounts? I don't. I've had her friends pouring through them. And her last post was at like 5.30 last night. Did uh, Bryce happen to mention it if it was a Nevada license plate? Did he see that much? No, he didn't see anything about the truck. He said he was a pretty good distance away from it. So he dropped her off and then she walked quite a ways? She didn't want yeah. him to just pull up to the vehicle? Her request was to stop away from the vehicle so she could walk? He said he dropped her off right in front of the school. And she walked in the parking lot. Okay. He described the green as being like a... What color green? Like a darker green. And he said he was, it was like one of the really ugly, like two, early 2000s, he said. Ford F-150? Yeah. Her best friend... And his name was Bryce, right? Mm hmm Said that she's been talking to a guy named JT. She says she doesn't know anymore. She just keeps calling him JT. Has any, she goes, has anybody talked to a guy named JT? I know they've been talking a lot lately. What's Bryce's last name? Dickie. 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 I'll try to do some follow-up and call and talk to some of these people. I'm not sure if I'm going to get any more information than you guys have got. Um, and unfortunately, all we have is a green truck that's a Ford with somebody that nobody knows who this guy is. Yeah. Um, do we even know what this guy looked like? Did you give any descriptors of the guy? Yeah, he said he was a tall, white cowboy. I don't know if he Why would he call him a cowboy? Does he dress like a cowboy? I'm going to go get this put in. I'll call and let you know as soon as this is put in. Like I said, if she has contact with any law enforcement, once this is put in, then they'll just take her into custody and we'll contact you. Let you know that we have your daughter. I'll also call you back and let you know what my supervisor says um, and what the next course of action is going to be, okay? 
Okay, if you guys hear anything, I'm going to give you my card. Make sure you call and let me know so that I'm still in the loop with what's going on, okay? Sergeant Doug Fisher from the Operations Division of the Elko County Sheriff's Office arranged to meet Bryce in the parking lot of the local high school. While an officer had already interviewed Bryce on the night Brittany disappeared, Sergeant Fisher sought to reconstruct and visualize the events that emerged personally. Hey Bryce, how's it going? Good, man. I appreciate you meeting here. Yeah, no problem. So, kind of tell me, run me through it so I can understand what's going on. Alright, so, Sunday, around 11, okay. I started texting, got few texts from Brittany and just asked if I wanted to hang out. I uh, said, sure, get ready and stuff. Told me she could meet me at Angel Park because she said her dad was doing band practice. And then went to town, called her when I got into town on 5th, and then picked her up at Angel Park, drove around, went up towards Mountain View, asked what she wanted to do. Since she had no idea, I said, why don't we just go drive around to Spring Creek since we got more room over there. So we went back over the hill, just started chatting, talked about her finishing school, how school was going for me. Kept driving around, and then we were over in the horse palace section, and my dad called me asking if I could come back home. So I told her I needed to go. Asked her if she wanted me to just drop her back off at Angel Park, and she said that she wanted to me to drop her off at high school to meet her new friend and said her dad was going to pick her up later so then came over here pulled in pulled in right over there gave her a hug and stuff and then she got out I pulled out and then started heading that way and the F-150 was over there but I didn't know that was where she was going at that time and then got about right towards where it opens up, and then look back, and they were both standing outside the truck, and then I got to the turnout right over there by the middle school, and then that F-150 was in motion. Okay. So you said what was the F-150? Yeah, it was uh, ones that are really ugly looking, have the like sidestep in them. Okay. Like that winter green, dark forest green? Uh, like a dark forest green. So you picked her up at 1.30. Where did you guys go? I mean, you said you were with her for how long? Uh, dropped her off at 4.30, so that's three, three and a half hours. I'm sure that you didn't drive around for three and a half hours, because that's a waste of gas. No, I, I drove around for three and a half hours. Okay. That's all you did for three and a half hours? That seems really odd, that Which, you just drive and aimlessly around. That's what I do almost every day. I was in my Chevy. What's your Chevy? Uh, it's a 93 Chevy 1500. Sorry, Silverado. Single cab or double? Single. Really Single with a long bed. So you just drove around? You didn't stop anywhere? No. We didn't stop at all. We literally just kept doing circles. Drove around towards the sports complex. Looked back around to the housing section. I just think it's kind of odd. I think you know more than what you're telling me. No, I'm being honest. Or, I mean... Not a bad way, but any of my friends, you can ask. That's what we do most of the time is literally just drive around Spring Creek for hours. Well, I'm thinking you know more about Brittany than what you're actually talking about. I, I've, been doing, I I've been doing this for a long time, and I usually can smell somebody that's leaving out something. So what are you leaving out? I'm not leaving out anything, sir. There's nothing that I'm leaving out. You know what streaks are? I don't have any chance. Okay, so it's just, if you, like, picture-wise, you know, you can, like, text it and then I should send pictures. So if you send a picture with someone for, like, ten straight days and it starts to streak, it's kind of a dumb to me if you didn't do it. But I've, I had a streak with Brittany for, like, 70 days. I had a habit, I was still speaking to her. So, you haven't had anything from her since Sunday, and that's it? Yeah. Um, where are you? Are you okay? Answer the phone. What time was that, please? That was 6.14. Little sis, is what you're referring to her as? Yeah, she's called me big brother since, like, my eighth grade year. We have a friend group here of around, like, 30, 40 people, and even more than that, no, Brittany. Brittany's really known all around Springfield. Why's that? 
Uh, she's, well, like, in the last, between, like, three years ago and, like, a year and a half ago, she kind of made a name for herself, because a lot of people around here didn't like Brittany. Okay. Um, in that period, she got in a lot of fights. Okay. But, uh, and then she just, she talks to a lot of people. So what else can you tell me about this phantom truck and dude, like, be specific? Um, okay, so, it it looked completely stock because it wasn't very tall at all. Um, the windows didn't look tinted at all to me. Uh, were they rolled down or were they up? Up. Okay. Um, it looked decently dirty, but just, like, about as much as that the truck is right there. A typical truck that's... Yeah, typical Spring Creek truck. At this time of year? Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, had a silver toolbox in the bed. Um, it had stickers on the back window, but I didn't see what any of them were. What time was that, you said? Uh, I dropped her off at right around 4.30. With the sole lead available, the Elko County Sheriff's took decisive action by issuing a press release, officially declaring Brittany missing. The announcement highlighted the urgent search for a green Ford F-150. Simultaneously, detectives pursued another avenue, focusing on tracing Brittany's cell phone, which remained unaccounted for. Recognizing the potential severity of the situation and considering it a matter of life and death, law enforcement requested Elko Central Dispatch to ping her phone for a GPS location. The phone pinged on Boyd Kennedy Road, prompting deputies to mobilize immediately. They conducted an exhaustive search of the area, hoping to uncover any clues that could lead them to Brittany and shed light on the circumstances surrounding her disappearance. As the Elko County Sheriff's Office tirelessly pursued leads to locate Brittany, her family and friends initiated their own search efforts. Brittany's close friend, Selena Winkler, conveyed that the entire town had mobilized in search of the green F-150. In a conversation with Bryce, Selena sought any unexplored possibilities, prompting him to suggest checking the Spring Creek Mountains. Expressing his regret, Bryce conveyed, I love you. I'm so sorry this happened, but I hope you guys don't blame me. Selena quickly reassured Bryce, stating, Bryce, we definitely do not blame you one bit. We love you too, bud. Keep your head up. Approximately 36 hours after Brittany's disappearance, Alicia took proactive measures by printing 540 flyers and distributing them throughout Elko and Spring Creek. She also utilized social media, posting inquiries on Facebook to gather information. To streamline communication, a tip line was established, receiving calls at a frequency of every two to three minutes. Investigators carefully filtered through the incoming tips, working late into the evening of March 10th. However, the situation took a distressing turn when Alicia received an alarming text message from an unfamiliar number. The sender claimed to have Brittany and demanded a ransom of $7,000, threatening that Brittany would be killed if the amount was not paid. The alleged kidnappers asserted that Brittany was unwell due to the sedative they had used implying that time was running out. Disturbed by the severity of the situation, Alicia promptly informed the detectives about the ransom demands. In response, they advised her not to reply to the text until they could trace the phone number and further investigate the situation. The following morning, Alicia took the matter directly to the sheriff's office. She shared the disturbing text messages with Detective Stake, initiating the process of tracking down the phone number associated with the ransom demands. Detective Stake promptly escorted her into an interview room where specialists began analyzing her phone. The primary objective was to swiftly trace the origin of the ransom messages aiming to prevent any harm to Brittany. During this critical phase of the investigation, Detective Stake received an urgent call from Sergeant Fisher, who was situated outside of town in the remote area known as Burner Basin. Local residents assisting in the search for Brittany had discovered something alarming and promptly contacted the police for assistance. It looks like a human head to me. I walked right. over. We walked over here on this side. That's the. I'm pretty sure that's their drag mark there. Actually, I'll just get you guys started on a statement, so you don't have to linger around out here. How's that? If you take a couple seconds and uh, fill out your name, information, kind of what you're doing and what you saw. Yeah. Probably should go down the bottom and come up, because this is probably what we're gonna have to work right here. Drag mark right there. We got drag marks right there. Yeah. Big time drag mark. 
Yeah, so let's go down the bottom and come up the bottom yeah, of the goal. That's a 1092, that's a body. Yeah. Let's get out. Yep. I can see enough right now. Looks like a girl's hand. Let's back out. Yeah, that's a good Yeah. Okay. I will. I'm going to get the, their vehicles out. We'll get the crime scene secured and call stake. Let's go out the same way. Yep. We'll process the whole thing. Okay. All right. Hey, Nick. We got a female body. We have a female body. I don't know if it's her or what, but we have a female body out behind uh, Burner Basin. Got drag marks and a bunch of things. So we had two guys that find them, found them. We're getting their statements. I'll get a picture of their uh, their footprints that are going in and out, and I'll get a um, picture of their tread marks. Basically, she face down, pants down. Um, she's got uh, heel, black heels on, like boots on. Let's uh, grab, we'll get uh, tire print from them and then also take their shoe prints because they went in there. Okay. And ex for exclusion. Or exclusion purposes, yeah. Sounds good to me. Sorry, you guys got to go through this. I get, this is what I do. The worst part is I know her dad. Well, let's not assume. Detective Stake quickly considered the ransom requests. Was Brittany harmed due to the non-compliance with the demands? The detective needed to rush to the location quickly, but before doing so, he had to inform Alicia. I was on the phone, okay? And um, I just want to let you know that we have found a body. Alicia expressed her certainty that it was her daughter, triggering an onset of panic. I'm going to pass out. Can you get me some help? Yep. Can you get There's me some help? Okay. Can you get me some help? Okay. 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 Okay
later, James opened Alicia's bedroom door to a flood of messages expressing condolences for their loss. His parents confirmed the heartbreaking news, leaving James in disbelief. Initially questioning the identification, he described going numb and feeling utterly lost. Brittany's friend, Cheyenne Fry, drove to Alicia's house with the most substantial bouquet she could find offering a comforting hug to Alicia. Meanwhile, on Facebook, Bryce shared, Yesterday, we all received news that made us hit the floor. Around 8 in the morning, we started meeting up at my house to grieve and to mourn Brittany's life, which was taken far too soon. That day, I had tears of pain and joy. I wish she could have seen the amount of us who came together to honor you, sis. We love you so much. Just know you won't ever be forgotten. While Brittany's family and friends were in mourning, investigators turned their attention to Alicia's phone to trace the origin of the ransom messages. A diligent investigator managed to track down the phone number, discovering it to be a spoof number not located in Nevada. Coupled with the kidnappers requesting gift cards as payment, detectives began to suspect the invalidity of the ransom demands. It was revealed that Alicia had shared her personal phone number in some posts about Brittany being missing, Investigators explained to her that it was likely a gift card scam. Detective Stake proceeded to the coroner's office, hopeful that the autopsy results would produce new leads. The examination revealed that Brittany's cause of death was strangulation, accompanied by blood loss from a severe neck wound that had severed the carotid artery. Samples were collected from a rape test kit, including swabs from Brittany's neck and fingernails. Superficial bruising on her hands indicated defensive wounds. Detectives coordinated with the crime lab to expedite DNA analysis, including testing on evidence such as the used condom found at the scene. While awaiting the DNA results, attention shifted back to the cowboy driving a green Ford F1 150. Detectives initiated a search for individuals in the vicinity using the moniker JT and possessing a green F-150. Two potential matches were identified, but investigations into their whereabouts ruled them out, as neither was in the area during the time of Brittany's murder. Then, detectives carefully reviewed surveillance footage from businesses near Spring Creek High School, focusing on locating the green F-150 in which Brittany was last seen alive. The cameras at the Maverick convenience store provided crucial footage of the roadway leading to the location where Brittany's body was discovered, as well as one of the entrances to Spring Creek High School. During the thorough review of the footage, detectives made a surprising observation. Instead of the expected green F-150, Bryce's blue Chevy pickup truck was spotted. The footage depicted Bryce's truck bypassing the entrance to Spring Creek High School and proceeding along Boyd Kennedy Road in the direction where Brittany's body was eventually found. Realizing a potential deception, detectives decided to bring Bryce in for an interview, initially under the pretext of discussing his phone data. However, their primary objective was to obtain Bryce's DNA for further investigation. Just showing you the door's not locked. You're not locked in here, all right? Um, like I said, you're not under arrest. Okay. At this point, you're not even really a suspect, okay? Um, but like I said, just because of the nature of the investigation, we gotta, we gotta make sure that we do everything super thorough, okay? Um, so I got a little bit of the story as to what your involvement was, but I'm not clear on a lot of things, and I'm just trying to do the best job that I can do, so, so hopefully you can Ask any question you would like. Perfect, man. Thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, you're how old? I'm 18. Okay. Um, like I said, you're not under arrest right now. If, if you think that I'm being an asshole or something like that, you can get a walk out. There are some questions I'm going to ask that you probably be thinking, like, what the fuck are you asking that for? But there's a reason, okay, and I'll explain it, all right? Okay. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions or if you need to clarify anything that I'm saying, because I want to make sure that we are completely clear on what's being said and how it's being said. So if you have, need any clarification whatsoever, please let me know. Okay. All right. Uh, Detective Nelson's here as well. He might have some questions as well. But okay. like, like I said, right now, as far as we know, you're the only person that saw her alive or the last person that saw her alive. Okay. Okay. So she's texting you. Did she text you first? Or, or, or sorry, when I say text, uh, Snapchat, did yeah. she snap you first? I was just saying Snapchat, so I'd be specific. Okay, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, I honestly don't remember who texted first. Okay, okay, that's okay. Um, and what did she say? Do you remember kind of how the conversation went? Was it? Uh, and what I'm getting at is, I mean, are you guys in any type of dating relationship at all? No. No, okay. So it wasn't like, hey, let's go hang out and, 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 go, and go party? No. Okay, all right, nothing like that. And so you're heading up to Angel Park, and now when you say you picked her up at Angel Park, I assume drive time from Silver to Angel, roughly five, ten minutes? Probably five. Maybe five. five. There wasn't bad traffic that Okay, 
Okay, so meet her, and now when you say you picked her up at Angel Park, was that at Angel Park? Yeah, right in the, when I pulled off by the Family Dollar, I don't know the name of that road. Uh-huh. Uh, she was standing right in the middle of the parking lot on the phone. At Angel Park? Yeah. Okay, okay, so she's in the parking lot on the phone? Yeah. Okay, so you pick her up, and what were you, what were you driving at that time? Uh, it was my 93 Chevy Silverado. Chevy Silverado? Yeah. Okay, what color is that? Um, I actually, I'm slightly rough on the color, but I'm pretty sure it's like really dark blue, but it looks black. Okay, all right, so darker color. Yeah. All right, <laughs> okay. Did she say anything about anyone that she was having problems with, or any, uh, any people that she was interested in, or anything like that? Um, we all knew she was talking to some guy that we think was in New York, but I mean, she'd be talking to him for a while. Okay. Uh, besides that, and then, like I told everyone else, a lot of people had problems with Brittany, but nothing that we would see with this outcome. Sure, sure. Well, hopefully, yeah. Okay. And, and now is not the time to, to, you know, hold back words, man. Yeah. Did she have a bad reputation or something like that? Um, with. A lot, because uh, she used to get in a lot of fights, and a lot of people didn't like... Brittany was a very straightforward person. Okay. And a lot of people didn't like that, because she was very blunt okay. and honest. Okay. So a lot of people disliked her. They just didn't like how forward she was, and she she really didn't hold back, basically. Yeah. Okay, all right. Is it primarily females, or male and female? Male and female. Uh, we went through, kind of did like the full circle, we went through over by the sports complex in Spring Creek. And then um, I had to go back home to my dad's house, so I asked her if she wanted me to drop her off back at Angel Park or where her dad was having practice. And then she was on her phone for about 30 seconds-ish, and then asked me if she dropped me, drop her off at the high school to meet her new friend. Did she give any, indica indica any indication, I'm sorry, of who she may have been talking to or anything like that? No, she just described a new friend, but also... Same thing, Brittany was always finding new friends. I mean, she had a new best friend probably about every month or so. Oh, okay. Kind of explain to me, did you drop her off, like, right next to his ride, or how did that no, go down? I dropped her off right here, because I didn't know, I just pulled up to the high school, because I didn't know where I was going. And then, so I got right here, and then she grabbed her keys, gave me a hug, said love you, bye, and then got out of the truck, and then, so I pulled it in reverse, started pulling out this way, and then she walked over to that F-150, and then by the time I'd gotten back out and onto the highway, the F-150 was pulling out. All right, so you are you basically made a loop then, essentially? Yes. Yeah, okay, and then heading back out towards Maverick. Okay, and so you see the, the green F-150? Yeah. No doubt in your mind, F-150? Yeah, no, I know exactly what truck it is because, to be bluntly, they're ugly as hell. <laughs> there's only one truck like that because okay. they have, like, like bubble shape to them almost. Okay, okay. Was there any other trucks parked over there or any other vehicles? There was a few, but there was a softball, baseball, and FFA going that weekend. Oh, so it was busy. Yeah. Did, you, did you actually see her get into the truck, or did you just seen the truck leaving after you left? Um, well, I saw, because I was, got about, right about here, and then cut straight across the parking lot. Saw her, her over at the F-150, but with someone, that was it. So, the, the, and again, I'm just asking for clarification, um, because the deputies told me that initially when they spoke with you, you had provided a description of someone that may have been the driver of that truck? Uh, I... They kept saying I gave a description, but literally the one thing I, the only thing I saw was a cowboy hat. That was it. Okay, so you didn't tell you couldn't tell if he was tall, short, fat, skinny, anything like that. The hat looked towards the top of the cab, so I said that, and they took it as tall. I'm like, that's why I kind of after that last officer, not in a bad way, but I kind of just stopped saying stuff because it kept getting twisted around, and I kept hearing different versions of what I said. Well, that's why I want clarification. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I just want to make sure. No, but all I, all I saw was a cowboy hat, and that was the only identifying mark that I could make. Okay, so he wasn't outside of the truck. No, he got. Uh, when I was over here, they were both standing outside the truck. But then by the time I had gotten right in front of the high school on the highway, uh -huh. the truck was moving through the parking lot. What was she wearing? Uh, she was wearing 
like, I don't know how else to describe it besides like hippie bell bottoms. They're like leggings but bell bottoms. So they're elastic, but they're yes. bell bottoms on the bottom? Okay. Uh, they were like really fluorescent, like tie-dye color. Oh, they're pretty loud, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then um, she was wearing a gray sweatshirt, a zip up. Okay. Did you see the shirt on underneath the no. zip up? No. Does she have any um, anything in her hair, or wearing a hat, or anything? No. Um, she had a a lot of makeup over her eyes, but she always wears a decent amount of makeup. Okay. And then she had her phone at that time too, right? Yeah. Um, all she had, at least that I I didn't notice anything else besides her keys and her phone. Okay. Where, did the keys have anything on them? Uh, it had a lanyard, but I think it was just the uh, the senior twenty twenty lanyard. The high school lanyard. Yeah, they all kind of look the same, like the gray purple color. Your truck is your truck a single cab? Yeah, it's a single, single cab. cab. Single cab. Um, what about the the F one fifty that she got into? Um, it looked. Ju I didn't notice any windows in the back, so it. I assumed it was just a single cab, but I couldn't tell if it was a crew cab or not. Because when you pulled into the parking lot, it was facing you, and you weren't paying attention to it, right? Uh, yeah. The it was parked straight towards the high school, so I came up right behind it. Okay. But I mean, there's still a good probably. 40 feet between where I was driving and where he was parked. Okay. Did you notice on the bed it was a step side? Yeah, that's where one of the details that tells me get mixed up a lot is there was, that's why I recognized what type of truck it was because it had the step side right in between the bed and the cab. Mm -hmm. No doubt on that then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. And was there anything else on the truck that stuck out? Um, I saw a, a sticker in the back window, but I couldn't tell you exactly what it was. Okay. Um, Do you remember where on the back window? Uh, I remember it was on the bottom, but I don't know if it was straight on the left corner, but it was it was towards the left side of the truck. Okay. The, I didn't see the right side of it at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else you can think of about the truck that might be um, specific or help narrow it down? I swore that I saw a toolbox, but I can't be 100% on that. Sure. Understood. Okay. Because I had gotten a text from her friend Cheyenne, probably about like half an hour after I dropped her off, that she couldn't get a hold of her, but I didn't really take any concern until my brother started texting me. Uh, yeah, James didn't text me until about 8, 16. That night? Yeah. Okay. He texted me right about then, and then asked for my phone number around 8.30, and then that's when I got a call from one of the deputies. Oh, I see. Okay. So that's how they got a hold of you? Yeah. Okay. And then I called my friends, tried to see if anyone knew where she was. I tried calling Brittany. Um, I texted her brother James. I was trying to see if I could get a hold of anyone that knew anything. My friend came and grabbed me, and then we were trying to organize like search parties and stuff. Because like Brittany going and doing stuff is an oddball, but Brittany is the person that like will always text her dad. Oh, okay. So when she didn't, we got really worried. Gotcha. So we went out looking till probably about two o'clock, and we all went home. Gotcha. Okay. Man, you put in some effort. Yeah. No, we were out there for probably about six hours. Yeah. Okay. She didn't leave nothing inside your truck or nothing like that. Nothing that I found. Have you guys ever been into an intimate relationship? No. No. Nothing besides hugging and just no kissing or no, no never. friends with benefits or nothing like that. No. So um, one of the things that we like to do just to be thorough, man, um, to make sure that, like I said, we cross all the T's, dot all the I's, is there any reason whatsoever, because um, obviously in these situations they, they go full bore, right? Is there any reason whatsoever that they would find your DNA on her or in her? No, not that I'm, besides maybe like this bag of hair or something on her jacket, there would be nothing else. So no sexual relationship whatsoever? No. Okay, okay. Is there anything on your phone that you would be concerned with us finding? No. No? Okay. Do you have any problem if we take a look at your phone just to make sure that we're good to go? Yeah. Okay, cool. Was there anybody in specific um, in the school itself that she continually told no that may have been frustrated with that? From what I've been told, she, cause she, used to, she hangs out with a lot of people, but from what I've been told by a lot of people is that she still has yet to have sexual intercourse with anyone. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, okay. 
Well, that's is, is, what, is what I've been told. Yeah. Okay. So she's not a girl that's considered easy in high school, and no. she told somebody no, and they got frustrated because they were told no. Yeah. Like she's easy to be friends with, but not not to date. No, she's. Okay. Now, would you be willing to submit? Thank you. Um, a buckle swab just for your DNA. Um, uh, what's a buckle swab? So it's essentially just two Q-tips. Um, you can do it yourself. They're a Q-tip about as long as this pen. You rub it on the inside of your cheek, and then you take the other one and rub the inside of the other cheek. We put it in a box. That way um, we have your DNA. It's suspected. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there was some kind of sexual activity, um, what they're suspecting. Okay. Um, not saying that you were that person, and you have no reason no, to I have your understand. DNA in there, but you were the last person that we know of that was with her when she was alive. Yeah. Um, Basically, for you, it'd almost be like an elimination, you know, kind of like, hey, this isn't our dude. No, I have, I have no problem. Okay, man, I'll be right back with you, all right? All right. All right. After releasing Bryce while awaiting the DNA results, the outcome from the crime lab arrived four days later. The DNA test on the used condom conclusively matched both Bryce and Brittany. Additionally, swabs taken from Brittany's neck and underneath her fingernails revealed a match with Bryce Dickey's DNA. Armed with this compelling evidence, Bryce was summoned for another interview. Hey, sit down in here real quick. Um, can I get you anything? Um, no, I'm okay. All right, um, I'll be right back. I'll go over this with you. Okay. Uh, just so you know, everything in this room is recorded and everything like that. So. Okay. Well, tell me about Brittany. Um, what, what, what's she like? <laughs> it's, um, you're gonna have to ask a question because that's that's a lot. Brittany is what? not not in like a bad way or anything, but I mean, right. Well, what was Brittany to you? Honestly, Brittany was my little sis. Like, I've known her since 7th or 8th grade, one of the closest people to me. Um, I was going to say, I didn't even start calling her. I call her, called her little sis for about the last two and a half, three years, but she called me big brother since probably about the, like, right after the first year that I met her, but um, one of the closest people to me. Um, she was, a lot of people didn't like her for a lot of reasons, but she was very uh blunt and kept to who she was even if a lot of people didn't like that so that was why a lot of people in spring creek didn't like her just because she was extremely honest no she was always happy um she would get in a lot of like actual fights but then a month later she would be best friends with the person she got in a fight with uh, she knew almost Everyone it seemed like there wasn't somebody in this town she didn't know, but um, she was extremely sweet. Pretty much always had a smile on her face. I haven't met anybody that's actually like had intentions to hurt Brittany. One other question: um, If you could say something to Brittany, what would you say? Easy, I love you. That'd be the first thing I would say. What about the second? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, because I kind of blame myself for all this. Even though, well, Why are you blame yourself. I mean, I know that I didn't know what was going to happen, but I mean, I'm the last one that freaking saw her before she's dead. And I mean, her mom even told made me promise that I wouldn't blame myself, but kind of still have. A lot of regrets and a lot of stuff I wish I would have done differently that day. Because I wish I would have just taken her back to town to her dad. But told her when we got the balloon release was the first time I saw her after it all happened. But um, I saw her and then I, we hugged and I said I was sorry and kind of both broke down. And then she made me promise that if I wouldn't blame myself. Stuff like that. And then the whole family kind of me and just told me that I meant a lot to Brittany and stuff like that so now just out of curiosity and we promise we won't tell your girlfriend um had you ever been no, I have, with I got that question the last two times Brittany and I have never been intimate in any way I mean like a lot of people get the wrong intentions because I mean do with all my friends but like calling females my female friends love and stuff like that, but that's just kind of 
the way I was raised in a sense, the grammar wise, but Brittany and I have and I have never had a relationship or have been intimate in any way. That's why my girlfriend was comfortable with her, is because she never flirted with me or anything like that. Did you ever want to be? No, not never. No, I never had that want or urge or anything. I literally saw Brittany as my little sister. And is there any way that your DNA could be associated with this case in any way? No. No. Okay. Well, I'm I'm kind of confused about a couple things. So round one, you pick her up at Angel Park, and then you come into Boy Kennedy Road entrance to the school at about what time again? Around uh, four thirty. Around four thirty. Okay. Um. So we got some surveillance footage. From Angel Park. Um, this is the camera, and I know. Forgive me for the, the blurry photo a little bit because we cleaned it out. Um, but down here is the time, and that was fifteen twenty. Yep. Uh, I don't know what time it is. Three twenty. Oh, okay. Yeah, three, two hours military after. time. Okay. Two hours after you said. Yeah. So it's it's a little bit later than what you said. So I'm just kind of confused, and I want to clear that up with you a little bit. Because that's her walking across the street. And is that your truck? Yeah, that looks like my truck. And then there's another picture. Yeah, no, no, no. That's my truck. That's your truck. Yeah. Okay. I so that that shows about fifteen twenty. I might be on off of my time stamps. The only like time stamp that I personally have is on my phone of what time I called her when I got on. Yeah, so that's two hours. I it's literally the entire time I was with her, I was. Not on my phone. Do you, do you see where? I I, I didn't see where they may be concerned. I, I understand that, sir. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing I'm just kind of confused about. Okay. And like I said, um, I just want to clear this up with you. That's okay. all. Um, this is some footage from Maverick across the street. So this is some surveillance footage um, from the front of the store showing Boy Kennedy Road. Okay. Okay. So if you look right here. Um, you can see uh, over here. So right over here, uh, right there. Yeah, right there. Oh, that's that's your truck right I there, about. Think is it smudged together since it's so far away? Yeah, I, I think so. Because okay. I have a long day that's on. Yeah. So this is the Boy Kennedy Road right here. That's your truck. Yeah. That's your truck going down Boy Kennedy Road. Entrance to the middle school and stuff is right here. That goes into the parking lot, and then there's the wrestling gym, which is right there, and then it cuts right and goes right to the middle school. Okay. So that's the way I went through. That's not what you said. No, I said I went through the void entrance. I didn't cross from the Maverick. Yeah. Um, what if I told you we had surveillance footage that appears your truck kept going out Boyd Kennedy Road? I didn't go down Boyd Kennedy Road. I just want to kind of clear everything up and get your explanation for this, okay? Um, because you seem like a decent guy. We've been sitting here chatting and stuff like that, okay? And I just want to kind of help you through this so that way um, we can kind of explain this stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, so with these, you can kind of see from my perspective when I'm looking at this what that looks like, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I can see 100%. Okay. I'm kind of in the middle. I got startled after the um, uh, the third cop I talked to, the one that called me down to the high school, because um called me a letter about three times and kept asking me if I killed Brittany, so they... Somebody it, asked you if you killed Brittany? A deputy did. Oh, okay. And it honestly startled the shit out of me. And I don't want to, I know I'm, I'm eight, only been 18 for a little bit now, but I'm, I know I'm 18 now, so even changing a little bit on the story isn't a big thing. Well, it, it is what it is, okay? That's why I'm trying to sort through it, okay? Yeah, so when he had talked to me and I went down Boyd a little bit, but not far, and then um, I took that 
first left off of the uh, Boyd Kennedy, which goes straight back to the right to the bottom of the trailer section, and then went back to the high school, but at being at Boyd Kennedy at the same time, which I'm missing it. It worried me because I didn't want him. So I I lied because I was scared of people thinking it was going to be me, which well, a lot of people well, still that's, do. That's understandable. You're the last person to see her alive. Yeah, which so. honestly scares me. But I see that there's issues with me not telling you 100. You need okay. to be 100 percent honest. You need to let everything out. Yeah. Um. So when you said you took that first left off of Boyd Kennedy, was was Brittany in the car with you at that time? Yes, she was. Okay. I kind of have like a set little thing of loops that I do when I get bored driving around Spring Creek. So, and that's one of the ones that I do a lot. And but being so close to being on Boyd Kennedy, and as soon as people were saying that's where she went missing, I I kind of got scared. I have one other concern. Okay. Okay. We located some items for an item. Okay. Do you have any idea what that item might be? No. Okay. What if I told you that it had both yours and Brittany's DNA on it? What would that be? Um, Do you have any idea? No. Now is the time to be the truthful. I'm being 100% sir. I don't know what you're referring to. Now, you told me before that you and Brittany had never been intimate in a sexual way. No. Okay, what if I said I had evidence that shows that that might not be accurate either? I'm, I'm not lying. I've never kissed. I've never had sex with Brittany. I, besides hugging and that, that's I've never had sex or any intimate relationship with Brittany. Okay. Have you ever watched TNA, uh, TV and seen DNA comparisons? No, no. I mean, a bunch of crime shows, but haven't really paid attention okay. to it. So, <clears throat> you gave a DNA sample, right? Yes. Okay. Um, we found a condom. All right. And we found Brittany. And we have Brittany's DNA. Okay. We have your DNA. And we have a condom. That can't be. It is. Okay. I, I, listen, I've, listen. I've never had sex with Brittany, I swear. I've never had sex with Brittany. Okay. So then explain to me how... I don't... I don't know. I'm freaking out right now because I've never had sex with Brittany. Okay. I've never so had sex... explain to me how a condom has your DNA on the inside and her DNA on the outside. Because I, that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. And I don't... And, and you can understand my concerns that, you know, I've, I've been truthful with you. Okay? And I know... Yes, I know this is really stressful. Okay, I, I can't imagine where you're at. All right, but we'll get through this together. Okay, and I need you to help me help you. All right, and the biggest concern I have is you could see that we have some footage that kind of contradicts what you said. Yes, sir. You've got a condom that was recovered near Brittany's body, and it has DNA on it with both you and Brittany. Okay, and you told me that you guys had never been intimate. All right, there's sure. only one way that could that DNA could have gotten on that condom that way. I'm, I'm aware of that. I... And so you have a pattern now of lying. You were deceptive to Detective Fisher because you got scared. You just admitted that. I, I admitted I was scared. And yes. your timeline doesn't match up. The other people we've talked to. Their stories don't match with yours. What do you mean they don't match with mine? Am I sorry? Am I allowed to ask that? Or no, 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 absolutely. No, you can ask. Yeah, there, there's just some issues with the time, okay, and things like that. But the thing I'm concerned about right now is if you were in my perspective and you looked at all this, what would you think? That I did it to bring you. Okay. If you were me, okay, how would you explain the condom? I. I don't know. If you were me looking at that as a detective, what would you make of it? Okay. Exactly what you guys are thinking right now. Okay, because here's the thing. If I don't know what happened, I can't help you out any, any more past this point. I can't help you figure out the, the truth. Tell me the truth. 
okay, we need to get through this together. And I need to hear from you what happened. Okay. Wait, are you, can I ask a question? Yes, are, go ahead. Are you guys trying to get a confession with me, killing Brittany? I'm trying to figure out how your DNA got on a condom on the inside that has her DNA on the outside. I need to figure out what happened with that condom. Our job is to work as hard to prove innocence as it is guilt. If you didn't do this, we'll work to the end of the earth to prove that you didn't do this. Okay. But that requires 100% honesty on your end because the stuff we have indicates it yeah. hasn't been there. And that's that's my concern. Is you, we've got these. Yeah, there's a lot of faults in it. And, yeah, I'm aware. Um, it was extremely odd. Uh, Brittany was being the, literally the only time Brittany was being really flirty for some reason throughout that day. So we kissed and um, I had gotten a blowjob that was through a con condom, but then after I was done, she was the one who took the condom and then thought she threw it out of the truck, and then that's... Where did that happen at? That first road all the way down Boyd. So... Well, not all, sorry, not all the way down Boyd. thought she just threw it out the window because she was the one who pulled it off, and then, because I had thrown the wrapper and stuff out the driver window, so I thought she just threw out the passenger side window. Um, so where were you seated in the vehicle while she was giving you the blowjob? In the driver's seat. Okay, and where was she at in the vehicle when she was giving you the blowjob? I'm um, kind of like, like bent over the bench seat in a sense, like kind of just leaning over. Okay, and that happened about right here? Yeah. When I was at the scene with Brittany, I found a condom, or one of our people found a condom that was near where Brittany was at. And there was also a condom wrapper that was on the roadway as well. Okay. And that condom that I told you about was much closer to where Brittany was found. And this is not where Brittany was found. Okay, I just told you, I just want the truth. No, I'm telling the truth, that is where I, that's where it happened. Where what happened? Where Brittany and I had, um, or I don't know, does that count as sex? I'm, I'm thinking it's it's sexual it's, acts. It's a sexual yes. acts. So that is where Brittany and I had sex. Okay. And then straight after, I went straight to the trailer section, and that was that was it. Okay. Did you ever have any sort of intercourse, oral or otherwise, anywhere else with Brittany? Just, just the blowjob. That was besides, like. Two, maybe three kisses, and that was about it, honestly. Okay. There wasn't much. He, it was almost didn't seem real in a sense because she literally just asked if I wanted a blowjob. It did not quite seem real, almost. Okay. So with everything we just talked about, if you were me, what would you think about all that? Think you guys already know what I think you would think. And what is that? That I'm lying about everything. I mean, I'm smart enough to know that's what you guys are thinking. No, I think you're very smart. From the position I sit in, okay, like I said, there's only that one chance that you have with me to tell me the truth. Because so far, you haven't told me the truth. And I think we both know that. Sure. Okay. And then the thing I'm concerned about is that everything you've told me just does not add up. Okay? Okay. And I think you're very smart. You know that. Okay? So, help me figure out what the truth is. Okay. But I need to hear that from you. So, the um, angel part timeline that I didn't actually realize that I had messed up the timeline that that, that one I'm being 100% on who's trying for a little while longer and her texting her friend actually did happen and she asked me to drop her off with somebody but I don't know who it was and uh, 
he actually had met us on Boyd, and I didn't actually meet the guy or anything, but because he met us up here, okay. um, the uh, got in, I don't know where, somewhere over here is where Brittany and I actually had sex. I dropped her off, I literally dropped her off with the guy literally in the middle of the road and drove off and it's, it's okay we'll get through this together okay you and I will get through this together Right. So just take a second and then tell me the truth, okay? Okay. Everything everything I've told except mess ups on the timeline is true. That was the exact same truck that I saw. Um I honestly couldn't tell you how the gun is that close to Brittany's body. I I don't know how that happened because <laughs> Brittany was still alive by the time I had dropped her off on the road with whoever the guy was I just wasn't thinking at all and I dropped her off and I literally just drove off I, I understand that I, I know what you're going to say no. and and what am I going to say that you have to know which you do have to know but I, I'm telling you that I had literally had never met this guy. Okay. Which, Brittany gets new friends every month, okay. and I didn't really think much of it. You've told us several different versions, okay? Yes, sir. You, do you really expect me to believe that you met a guy after you guys had had sex, and you just dropped Brittany off with him, and you don't know who that was? You're, you're a smart guy. I'm a smart guy. I okay. have met him, but I, I honestly you, don't know who he is. So I, I, I need you. I need you to be honest with me. When we started out today, I just I just wanted the truth from you, okay? And then the story changed. The story's so, changed again. The story's changed again. Okay. I need to get the whole truth because once that line crosses, we can't go back. I can't get that truth from you. Didn't even know the kid was back in town. It was um, the Chaz Randall kid is the one who picked her up. Which I didn't even know he was back in town. So I, I swear it. I swear it was Chaz Randall because that the kid's kind of distinguishable. But so you're telling me Chaz Randall met you on the road. I told you. What? And okay. you've known that Chaz Randall killed Brittany all this I, time, I, I and didn't you're know. just waiting to say something? Do you let yourself because be the last person to see her alive? I, you expect us to believe that I'm like, I was the last person to see her alive. I put myself in that position, and I'm going to sit here for a week and a half letting everybody think I was the last one to see her alive when I know who the last person to see her alive is. You think we're going to believe that? You're smarter than that. Listen, okay? This is, we, we can't keep coming up with different stories, okay? Because with what you just said, okay, as investigators, we're going to figure out about Chaz. Yeah. Okay? And if that's not accurate, where would we end up? Back to me. Back to you. You have told... A whole bunch of cops, a whole bunch of different stories. I have not told a whole bunch of different you stories. Need to, you need to trust me. I want you to trust me, okay? Okay. I need to hear the truth. The, the truth. I know I'm kind of losing your guys' trust by a second here, and let's just be honest about that. Am I correct? Am I correct? I'm, I'm not meaning to stretch on, I'm just asking. But I down there I had sex with Brittany 
and then uh, it done having sex, and then it got really quiet in the truck. It was really awkward, and I think we were both kind of like regretting it in some sort. And um, she literally just told me to just drop her off. And I didn't know where to drop her off. And she wouldn't tell me anything. And then uh, we got right to the uh, top of the trailer section, right to the houses. And then um, right up there. And then I said something that pissed her off. And she literally just hopped out of the truck when I was at a stop sign. I was freaking out because I felt like I had ruined a complete friendship over one dumb oral interaction, but, and then she didn't want to get back in my truck, and so we just sat there literally at a stop sign right off the where it turns back to pavement in the trailer section, just sat there talking, and then um, I had told her that I would drop her off somewhere, and I had gotten up there and tried to give her a hug, and she didn't want one, and I was fine with that, I understood. Then we got back in the truck, but then I just kept it in park because I didn't know where the hell I was going. And sat there and both just had steam pouring out of our ears because we were both upset. She just asked me to drop her off at her friend's house in the trailer section. I went down the side of the trailer section around the corner. I pulled up and then asked her again if she just didn't want me to just take her back to Elko. And she said no, it was fine. And then she had told one of her friends about what happened. I just don't know who it was. I dropped her off in the trailer section, and then that was... I drove off, pissed off, home, went home, and then sat there. And then when I went back over to my mom's and I got the text messages that she was missing and shit, and it freaked me the fuck out because... I, you know, last time I saw Brittany, I was flustered and angry. I call bullshit. What? I, listen, okay. You guys listen. are just looking for a confession. Listen. No, okay. I'm looking for the facts to match up. What facts don't match up right now? Okay, I think you know. But I don't, I'm lost. Do you think we've been doing nothing for the last week? No, I think we you guys have been working your asses time. off. We've talked to a ton of people. Your name has come up a lot. And the conversations they've had with you that your stories to us don't match. And I don't know how that is because literally everything I told you guys is what I've told everyone. This is what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to step out of this room one last time. Okay. And when I step back in here, I need you to tell me the truth. Okay. So you're still expecting us to believe that you dropped her off and her body miraculously appeared where the condom and condom rifle were. By some strange frequencies. I did not kill Brittany. Okay. But I... Okay. Imagine being in my position trying to explain this. Well, we're trying, and we're trying to figure out how she ended up dead. You realize she disappeared on the 8th. You've been sitting on this knowledge without sending, saying anything to anybody? Because I've had the entire town of Spring Creek asking me if I've killed Brittany. And you might as well have if you didn't say anything. So this is the story that you're going to stick with? Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead, stand up and place that down. Separate your feet and put your hands behind your back. On March 19th, 2020, Bryce Dickey was apprehended and formally charged with the murder of his 16-year-old friend, Brittany Ujlicky. Alicia and Jim received the news of the arrest and rushed to the sheriff's office. Upon their arrival, Detective State greeted them, hugged Alicia, and conveyed, we got him. In response, Alicia expressed disbelief that Bryce could be involved, stating that it didn't make sense and still doesn't. James received a call from Alicia, 
informing him of Bryce's arrest. The news left him surprised. Brittany's friend, Selena, shared her sentiments, expressing deep heartache. With Bryce's phone already seized, she didn't hold back in delivering a pointed message, writing, You are a serious piece of sh We all were there for you, cried with you, and all you did was play us all like a puppet master. In the weeks following Bryce's arrest, additional evidence was discovered as search warrants for Britney's and Bryce's Snapchat accounts returned. Snapchat memories from Britney's account showed them together after he reportedly dropped her off. The photos were taken inside Bryce's vehicle. GPS location data placed Britney and Bryce within proximity to where her body was eventually discovered. Bryce's GPS data showed him returning to Spring Creek approximately one hour after Britney's last photo was taken. Two years after Britney's death, Bryce Dickey went on trial for her assault and murder. Jim attended the trial daily, hoping to bear witness to his daughter's final moments and see justice served. Jim expressed that he examined every picture, though the process took a toll on him emotionally. During the trial, Brittany's friends testified that she had rejected Bryce after he confessed to having feelings for her. Bryce's girlfriend of 18 months at the time of the murder also testified that he had choked her during on four separate occasions. Following a nine-day trial, the jury delivered a verdict in less than four hours of deliberation. Bryce Dickey was found guilty of first-degree murder and sexual assault. He received a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 46 years. Brittany's brother, James, expressed that if he could speak to his sister again, he would tell her that everything he's done since the day she passed has been in her honor. He emphasized that the world lost an incredible soul. Remember, it's your curiosity that fuels this channel. Keep exploring, stay inspired, and join us for more amazing content next time.